even David himself. Uh, no shoes. Um, the actual face of the character, as you focus the light on it to try to get a better look, looks like that. Okay, well, I'm not going to try and uh, unstake her or anything at this point. Um, if she's staked by a larger piece that's, you know, kind of still attached to the pile, I'll try and snap it off without bothering to try and pull it out. But I'm going to toss her over my shoulder and try and move quickly out of the warehouse. She is staked to a larger piece, and for that regard, I'm going to need... What's your strength up? My strength's two plus one potence. Okay, then. In that case, uh, above average strength. It... It, uh, it takes some moving. Uh, in that case, Marcus, with your heightened senses, lots of moving is happening inside the warehouse. Oh, come on. What the hell did you find? Someone staked. Well, you better hurry up, because I don't know how we're going to get out of here. I am, I am. But, uh, it's... With, with your potence combined with the two strength, you do get her free. Um, she does not awaken from whatever torpor hell that she's been sent to. Her eyes are frozen open, and she is, uh, the hands were thrown up in almost like a defensive gesture. She's just rigid right, I'm there. Gonna, I'm gonna kind of toss her over my shoulder, uh, stick the flashlight either in my mouth or between my jaw and my shoulder. <laughs> um, what? just the whole situation, like, it's gonna be really damn hard to focus the light to get yourself out of here. Not that it's impossible. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna provide enough light. It's just gonna be really yeah. shitty. Yeah, it's just a situation combined with the fog, too. Alright. And, uh, uh, if I manage to pass one of the, uh, clearer-looking scorch marks on the way out, I'm going to, uh, flash a quick picture, but I'm not gonna go to any great efforts. And, uh, at this point, uh, your character uh, confined with uh, the fact that uh, it's really getting so hard to see now in front of him, even with the power of the flashlight. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You're, at this point, you're not sure that whether the Kodak disposable camera could even take an accurate picture at all. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, in that case, I'm just going to head uh, as quickly as I can uh, towards the front door. Okay. It's uh, been quite some time that you guys have been waiting outside here. And uh, Marcus, especially at the door, uh, cajoling and yelling at David to hurry the fuck up. But eventually Marcus does see his Nosferatu companion with that pale waif on his shoulder and the flashlight awkwardly, uh, you know, positioned between his jaw and his shoulder to try to get some semblance of light. Right, from, standing from the door, it's hard to see the beams from the vehicle. Right, I'll hand the flashlight off to uh, Marcus and then start uh, moving towards Do you vehicle. flash it directly in his eyes before you give it to him? Oh, yeah, no, to no, totally. Here, take a look at this. No. No, I don't. Okay. And everyone else? Basically, I'm assuming we're all going to get in the car and... Okay. Yeah. Byron is ready to go. Is there enough room to have, uh, let's see, the four of you plus the retainer plus the, uh, the body of the pale wave? Pop the if, there's, if there's not, I'll toss her in the trunk and take the subway back. Well, I mean, you guys could all pile in. It's just going to be a little cozy. It's just the pale wave, though, is probably going to happen in the trunk. Whatever, I just Okay. I just toss that corpse in the trunk. Okay, that's fine. You toss her in the trunk. No response. <laughs> I don't think she's going to mind. Hmm. All right. As for an actual, like, vehicle trip, uh, the retainer is, uh, well, uh, being the driver he is, was uh, going to attempt to make slow progress. But he really is driving at a crawl to ensure that, you know, he doesn't run into anything. That being so, said... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just wanted to make sure that we knew where we were going. I mean, don't want to come out just anywhere with a body out of the trunk. Yeah, I was going to say we need to pull over someplace and then figure out what we're going to do on the way back to Astoria, if we get that far. Okay. 
as uh, the retainer makes a slow progress driving uh, carefully out of the warehouse district. Uh, as you're leaving, the uh, the fog seems to uh, get better as uh, it becomes easier and easier to see the further you make it away from that warehouse. Eventually comes to the point where uh, you've finally gotten out of the warehouse district entirely, entirely, and there's only a thin mist before you. Full visibility has been restored, and you look back behind you. Fox still there. As if it has smothered the entire warehouse district. Okay, so, yeah, where do we want to unload this corpse and risk unstaking her? Find some parking lot in the middle of nowhere with some uh, lights to see, I guess. Like Are any of you have any sort of medical training? I do, actually. Uh, judging by what you assume, even though she's obviously a vampire, you're, you're getting the impression that e she has taken such severe and serious damage uh, from all the battered uh, limbs they have, and uh, the you know body parts that uh, may have been shifted, perhaps even dislocated. She she's going to be in torpor, regardless of that stake. Fair then enough. Bar Barnes going to suggest that uh, we each uh, uh, give a blood point, like put it into a blood bag or something, and feed that into her uh, blood bonder to all of us if we can a little bit. That would be a valid option, um, and probably get her out of torpor. But one blood point is actually a whole lot of blood. Just putting it out there. Well, it is, but I don't know if there's a smaller amount. I mean, we we pool it, and, uh, I mean, her body could hold it. I mean, four. If she's in torpor, she'll probably use all of it. But whatever. It's Grim's decision on that, if we go that route. That, that's we a see. player's decision on whether you want to feed another vampire your blood who that you don't even know. <laughs> yeah, we still need to unload her somewhere, regardless. Uh, you all uh, managed to drive out into Steinway, and uh, yeah, your vision is completely fine. As a matter of fact, uh, you might want to dim off the heightened senses, uh, Marcus. Don't want to get flashed. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to turn them off for a while now. Or does he? I do. You, you might want to get flashed. It's not spring break, though, so I don't know why he'd want to do that. Well, spring break... Uh... I mean, unless you're on, like, Long Island or something. You still probably don't <laughs> want to get flashed by anyone. <laughs> Spring break in Queens, how is that? <laughs> I mean, you might get flashed by a hobo or something, or, you know, some kind of pervert. Um, good times. Yeah, yeah, now that we're out uh, and relatively safe and can talk, um, Byron's going to suggest that... Uh, we have the retainer drop us off at some empty property we have unused. I'm assuming we might have like a warehouse or apartment building or something that we can uh, do. Uh, if we're going to unstake her and, and uh, uh, bring her out, uh, it'd be a controlled environment. Not a I, warehouse, not an Astoria, but you do have properties that are currently vacant. I would assume so. Well, there's well, another then. option. I mean, Theo Bell said there was anything... That any, if there was any said the situation got weird, we could always just go to the sheriff, so... This might be a situation where we might want to go to the sheriff. Just saying. That's true. Well, I mean... We might, also, like... we might also not want the sheriff to know about this if it turns out to be something we can use. Right, this is a careful balancing act of uh, secrets versus uh, uh, openness of our ability to handle things independently versus uh, crying to authority. Um, so, yeah, we might want to go see him. Or we might want to do this ourselves. It could really go either way. Now, I think that at this point we'd be relatively certain that this is the fourth Sabbat. Because there were four supposed to be in there, and then there were three scorch marks, and then this woman. So, I don't know if that will impact the decision. That's assuming that there's the bot at all. We still don't know that for sure. I thought that uh, Theo said that there were four Sabbat in the area. He said uh, there were. He said there were four suspected Sabbat members. 
So regardless of what we do, we should have a reasonable amount of safety uh, precautions. Um, do I have a crazy room? I I'd assume that I I'd have a crazy room in my haven, and because, you know, anyone that knows me at all knows where my haven is. That's, like, the easiest thing to track down. I'd assume that my crazy room would probably be actually a good place for this to happen. All right. Could describe your crazy room to us uh, in your non-denominational church. <laughs> The, the basement, that is where I, where what would be my haven, and my crazy room is not so much a good crazy room as it's just a strong door on my room. Okay. You have a crazy room then, sure. Funded by the generous visitors to the non-denominational share. <laughs> so wait, we're going Flushings now? Well, I mean, unless anyone else has a better idea, I'd rather this be somewhere where we have, where at least one of us has a decent amount of control, rather than somewhere where we don't know as well, because it's just a property passing through our hands at the moment. Note to self, get a metal chair bolted to floor in Haven. <laughs> Stick Malkavian on chair. <laughs> you, mean well, that's I mean... not, you mean that's not standard? Not yet. I mean, I've... My uh, haven is just barely renovated, let alone tricked out at the moment. Right, Grimoth? Yeah, the uh, Nos Nosferatu has been uh, spending what little money he has on practical things, like latex gloves and a flashlight. Yeah. I've now, been spending it on less practical things, like alcohol. Now, you guys could have very well gone to uh, ye old uh, World of Darkness 7-Eleven to try to pick up some supplies or what have you. It wasn't that late at night. Although it is a Sunday night, so businesses tend to close early in that regard. But, uh, yeah, the situation there. So what are you all going to do? You all can just keep driving around Steinway if you like. You know, well, yeah, let's just keep driving until about noon. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in midnight territory right now, so you got another 12 hours. The retainer would make it. Not if I well, have anything to do us. about it. Well, there is Rikers Island over there. I mean, there's that... Oh, yeah, no, like... totally. Rikers would be just the greatest place to unload a corpse from the trunk of our car. I'm sorry, I don't know what's in Rikers Island in general. I'm, I'm sure Rikers Carter Vander Waden would, would, would enjoy that. It's a, it's a prison. <laughs> Right, okay. Rikers Island is like the biggest prison in New York. Okay, um... So, yeah. You watch Law and Order, they talk about Rikers Island, they talk about Sing Sing, and that's about it. And send you up the river, and all those things. I think that's where be... the saying, send you up the river, comes from. Right. From the map of think. Queens we have, it looks like there's a park area near Steinway in Astoria, like, to the west. Listen, whatever we're going to I do, know that I don't want well. to unstake her out in the open. Tire to a yeah, tree. This is no, New I York. mean anywhere that she could scream for, like, you know, the actual cops. Yeah, or okay. run away. Or call, I mean, we need to get her, you know, subdued somewhere, you know, in a room with bungee cords, ropes, what have you. That sounds like my room. <laughs> that's that's it, all the way. That's over in Flushings, bro. That's like... Another 30-minute drive. Is it a reasonable assumption that I have uh, basic steel handcuffs, Grimoth? Do you do a lot of that in your uh, Nosferatu investigative work? I, I, more as a precaution. I wouldn't have more than one set if I even had any at all. Or your Nosferatu uh, I might have a couple pairs. Not the oh, okay. main oh. ones. If, uh, if if Byron's got a set on him, I, I'd be more willing to go with that then, than uh, than uh, David he pulling that out. He, he didn't bring those. Uh, Are they the fuzzy kind? Covered yet? Yeah, I was say that would be interesting. You know, the the, the police guy. You know, this guy. Like, I could have sworn I brought my handcuffs. Byron's like, here they are. Like, what? <laughs> you were looking for handcuffs, right? Yeah, this is you know tailored leather, real rabbit fur. 
Sure. We'll go ahead and say you have a pair of steel handcuffs with you. Okay, well then, uh, let's just find some sort of room in which we can contain her, because we're going to cuff her beforehand anyway. Is there a basement to my shoddy run-down apartment building? Yeah, but it's not, say, a part of, like, what your room would be. Like, uh, the actual basement for it is kind of like a closed-off, like, maintenance sort of closet with the water heater and all sorts of other things. Okay, I was just wondering if, like, the basement was open and it was, like, the laundry room and we could just, like, turn all the laundromats on. Your, uh, your, your apartment complex is, uh, is not the sort where, uh, they actually have their, their own, uh, laundromat. You have to outsource that. I personally like the idea of the crazy room. Let's just go to flushing. All right, on the way, do we want to get, uh, anything like, I don't know, a blood bag or something? Yeah, I'm just, I don't know where we're going to buy a blood night. bag at this time of night. Can't you just know. pour it into their mouth? Just stop right. by one of the hospitals in New York City. Can, uh, one blood bag, please? Just the drive through <laughs> that, That's an honest question, though. Can't you just pour it in their mouth? You certainly could. Yeah, I'm, I just didn't want to, uh, you know, stick my wrist or whatever down there and have, have her clamp down on it and not release. Well, so you can... Put a plastic cup first. You could do that. You could also just have it suspended over her mouth. She's going to be handcuffed. Damn it. All right. And if she has enough potence to just snap the handcuffs, we've got a lot more to worry about. You awake the Methuselah. <laughs> Seriously. Game over. No, fuck that. Come on, that. that's not till the second challenge. <laughs> if this is a Methuselah, she's got like one blood point from us. We wait for her to burn that out, and then we club her into unconsciousness and die. <laughs> and like, so what do we do with the Methuselah, guys? Diablo rise. Uh, I think it'd become a free-for-all. I, I don't know. Yeah, seriously, we'd, we'd all kill each other over it. I mean, uh, the, well, the unfortunately potential. For all of you guys, well, unfortunately for all you guys, I have the advantage. I have a knife. <laughs> That's actually kind Let's of... see, latex gloves save you from the knife, bitch! <laughs> well, actually, oh, you, think uh, I'm you, not can't, my... you can't... You can't make, not... uh... Go ahead. You think I'm not getting my shot before we wake her up? Actually, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, but that said, you can't use weapons during a clinch. Fun fact. So, uh, just in that case, the Nosferatu will have to hope that uh, he gets the he gets the clinch first. <laughs> Pretty much. Anyway, I think we're driving to Flushing's. Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's. 1.10 a.m. by the time that you guys uh, make it to Flushing. Uh, not too much traffic on the roads, but this is a massive metropolitan area, and even on what is now a very early Monday morning, people have places to go. I actually have a very important question uh, that I think you'll all agree needs clarifying before we go any further. Who picked what station to listen to on the radio? Well, oh, I say, this is Joseph's vehicle, and his retainer is driving. The wheels on the bus go round and round. School Whoops. kids rock. I accidentally, I accidentally bro broke your radio. Sorry, guys, because I didn't know my own strength. Oh, you, you yeah. thought we were listening to that already? I it's like, we were singing it. It's like, it's like, well, you know, that's interesting, uh, Aaron, because your character noticed that apparently there was a secondary radio system located in the trunk, so whenever oh, the first fuck. one works. <laughs> God damn. Don't worry, guys, I'll sing. We'll be fine. Okay, you guys arrive at the non-denominational church then. Is, uh, now Joseph, uh, uh, Sean, your character, uh, is this like a 24-7 open all the time? Anyone's allowed to come in if they need assistance or just a small respite or? It has a um, drive I'd imagine the, too. Okay. The front will be open, but the back, the, there's an actual closed off section for the, um, for the, the resident priest. There's actually a uh, a a house attached, essentially. I can actually draw you up blueprints if you want. 
No, I, I definitely know that a priest house attached to it. I just wanted to get an idea of if, you know, the non non-denominational church ever closed its doors, as it were. No, there, there's always going to be at least one of the me or one of my two retainers there at the front of the church. Okay. All right. You guys uh, pull up no fog. It's a, it's a pretty uh, early morning outside. Moon out there, stars, as you all drive past the, the water there heading on the interstate. And you make it to Flushing, Chinatown. All right, let's let's uh, let's have someone look around real quick to make sure that no one's watching us unload a corpse from the trunk into the church. Again. Again. Well, given your uh, position, uh, you're pretty shaded. It doesn't really look like anyone could even really have a hope of seeing you. But, I mean, you might have been tailed on your way here. You don't know. All right, then let's do this fast. <laughs> oh, what? If, if, if I had said, yeah, you see people like, okay, let's do it slow. <laughs> no, in that case, it would be then let's not do it at all. Oh, okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood the parameters. Yeah, no, we're going to make a show of it for all the people watching us. Hey, check You're out You're on this candid camera. Fucking asshole wants to be on America's, America's Funniest Home Videos, and he's just so having to meet a recording right now. I'll kick him in the balls a few times, so that'll help. Last thing we need is Bob Saget laughing at us. I would say, yeah, that's during the reign of Bob Saget still, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's totally a way to move up and build respect in the vampire community, right? Look at these kumquats right here. Fucking douches. That's what they're doing. Can't believe that shit. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, bring her in real quick and uh, go to your crazy room. Okay, I um, imagine that we get together, chair, whatever else we can do to get her tied down, and um, would it be possible... Well, you know what, now. Okay, how are you binding her in this crazy room? I would say lash the feet to the uh, uh, legs of the chair, hand cover hands behind the back of the chair, and maybe... If you got more rope, uh, wrap it around her torso as well. Why use rope when we live in an age with zip ties? Okay, fine. Does he have zip ties there? We can use those, or if you have them. I'm just thinking of stuff he'd have at the, at the church there. This non-denominational church actually doesn't church? believe in zip ties. Kinky. Uh, like, seriously, why would you have rope at a church? I think it's more likely that he'd have, you know, zip ties for crazy room use. You gotta hang up all the non-denominational religious symbols, man. With rope? Never said it was a well-off church. It runs off of donations, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's a good question. What kind of stuff do you have to bind people up at this church? Well, I'd imagine that there'd at least have to be some rope laying around. I mean, considering that you, you got to have everything in case things go wrong with the, the actual building itself. I have some sane people working here. Okay. Name two. Both my retainers. And it doesn't count if they're blood-bound. <laughs> All right, you have some rope then. And the handcuffs. All right, so handcuff her behind the chair and uh, tie her to the chair. It's going to be a really, you know, polite and friendly wake-up she's going to get. Okay. Oh, I, I have make sure I have all set to tell her to relax, so... <laughs> He's the, 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 first thing. The, 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 the body uh, it is, is just, uh, you know, the pale waif form is just uh, s just slouched there as best it can be. The, uh, the, the massive uh, length of wood still sticking out of her chest. Not as massive as it was before, uh, before David broke it off in order to actually get her out of there. You're welcome. Thanks, man. Her, so her, her eyes are still open, and, uh, you know, the, the, the piercing blue gaze, and it's deathless. 
and her mouth contorted in what appears to be a scream of sorts. Her hands, which had normally been thrown up in a defensive gesture, have of course been relocated for the purposes of this. I do so make sure I, I do make sure I have my shotgun out uh, and actually shouldered before, just in case anything does go wrong. Um, also, uh, Byron, she's uh, if you know she, if you know her heart were beating and uh, you know she, she uh she she uh, wasn't looking so cut up and so bruised, and she wasn't wearing those uh, tattered and battered rags. Just a little sort of a blouse type thing and a, a skirt that has definitely seen better days. Almost as if they were picked out of the trash. And her hair wasn't so messed up and matted with blood. And those eyes didn't look so creepy the way they were. Yeah, yeah. So if she were an entirely different person, she looked pretty cute. Got it. Got it. Yeah. But of course, you know, as a vampire, you, you, you wouldn't mind her no matter what, right? <laughs> So you're saying that eyes and Nosferatu should hit on her. That's what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yes. No, no, I, I want, I, I I want I, to see I'm, that. I'm reading the subtext here. It's, uh, it's, it's something. Palpable. Palpable. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> Let me show you what else is palpable, baby. I'll take you out of Torbor for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isn't so, that like uh, the opposite of making someone rock hard? <laughs> I mean, not only is she dead, but she's paralyzed, man. What more could you ask for? You know, she can't say no. Uh, yeah, we all have to leave I mean, the room you know, and give enough for to a minute. I mean, it's cool. It's cool. She could be smiling like a donut, I guess. I mean, he was the one who did retrieve her out of there. Who knows what really took him so long? <laughs> well, I mean, you know what they say that Prince Charming did to Snow White. Uh -huh. So no, you're gonna I, get, I you, so you're going to wake her up with your blood, eh? Nothing those seven dwarves didn't already do to her. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I mean, you know, going from gang rape to date rape. Step up, I guess. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That, that's the true ascension of the social ladder. I'm still getting raped, but I'm only getting raped by one person. Improvement. Progress. All right. So who's waking her up? Well, I thought we'd uh, we'd all mix our blood and something and pour it in there. Get it. So you oh. want to uh, create some sort of sabat rite with a vinculum? Sure. Yeah, about I just, that. I, 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 uh, nah. I'm running a little close to hungry. I don't want to decide that she looks tasty about halfway through this. Same Fucking here. hell. Okay, who's going to donate some blood? I will. I will. I just thought all four of us would want to have control over the situation. I, there we go. In. I, I'd like to, but I, I still don't want to go nom 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 during the middle of it. Go get us one of those red plastic cups that they have at church get-togethers. Fucking Dixie or Cup or some shit. <laughs> Best revival ever. This is awesome. Byron, you you have gone from being glacially bored to uh, totally being not in the proper economic standings at all. He went from boring to people. This is bullshit. You should throw your hat on out and just walk out. Wait, I I missed that. So I'm I'm offended by my surroundings. Is that what you're saying? You you can be. You're more than welcome to be offended if you want. I'm just merely describing them to you. Okay. No, no. He's he's very interested. There's there's a cute vampire chick. Maybe cute. He doesn't know. And uh, yeah, he's he's kind of into this actually. He's ignoring much of, much of everything else. That is one of the creepiest things I've heard in a while. He's into it, man. Come on. And I made a joke about gang rape a minute ago. It's okay. I'm only recording this for my YouTube viewers. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's cool. None of them will you know, have any idea what was said here. Oh, um, I'll she's only mostly dead. I'll totally edit this out because I'm a professional, guys. There's no need to worry. 
Oh yeah, no, totally, totally. That's that's totally something you'll do. Anyway. Okay. So, okay. So David and Byron are going to give uh, blood to wake Blee. this woman up. In that case, uh, the Dixie cup is brandished. Uh, David and uh, Byron sacrifice one blood point each, unless you would like to contribute more. One is sufficient. Ditto. Okay, both of you lose a blood point. It's unfortunate. Beast isn't too thrilled about it. And, you know, stare inside the Dixie cup. Joseph, it's, uh... It's, uh, it's pretty tempting. Uh, the, the, the rich, vibrant smell of vampire vitae filling the air in your own domain, your own haven at that, but you hold on. Alright, I unstake her and pour it in her face. You pour it into her face. <laughs> you know, that big hole right in the Trying. bottom part. Alright, so you unstake her first. Her body does not appear to react towards the shock at all. Um, the the blood slides into the uh, the vampire's mouth. Side note, you know she's going to have some wicked chest slivers. That's going to be obnoxious. Okay. Well, does she wake? No. But, you know, it's only been 30 seconds since it was happened. Well, Byron's keeping an eye on her face. He's got... Uh, uh, Dominate command ready to tell it to relax if she just totally wigs out. Is, uh, are any of her wounds starting to heal up at all? It, uh, takes several minutes. Yeah, but if, uh, David is still standing there, it does appear that, uh, the, the blood that you gave is starting to make an impact. Uh, upon her system. At least all the external abrasions are just, you know, trying to pass themselves up so that all the blood that was just intaken doesn't immediately leave her. And with that, she then resumes the previous thing that she was doing right before she was paralyzed, which is an immediately piercing, keening cry of anguish and sheer terror. Okay, that's when my command relax comes in. Is the crazy room soundproof? I'd imagine so. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you're like, let me out, retainers, let me out! No, we're, we're not allowed to. No! You are bloodbound to me, I command you! Yeah, you I, I really out? don't want them deciding, hey, okay, maybe it's a good idea to let them out. <laughs> Smart. Oh. Best idea. All right. Now I need to get a handle on the uh, potential dominate thing. Uh, what are you doing with that? Is it like a command? Or like, uh, give me uh, yeah, some semblance of it. Yeah, it's the one word command that they must uh, obey immediately if they fail their role. It's uh, manipulate plus um, intimidate. And I think since I'm saying it, since I have that enchanting voice, I get a plus two. I'm looking that up now. I don't know if it's plus two rolls or plus two to the die itself. Okay. Manipulation plus intimidation. Uh, she's, uh, she's a bit, uh, she's a bit uh, distracted at the moment given uh, her uh, sudden resumption of unlife. And uh, you can go ahead and roll for that then. I'm not going to tell you her current willpower. All right. You could just do what people do on TV and backhand her and tell her to shut up. Or we could throw water in her face. Oh yeah, no, that always works on television. 
Unless she's got amnesia, and then we have to hit her in the skull. Okay, the 1 and the 10. That's right, that cancels out one success. So there's the 6, 9, and 8. That is... What was the command? Well, the 10 is doubled because I have um, 4 points, and let me look at that. Yeah, I'm persuasive, so... Uh, right, the so one cancels out a success. I thought it targeted 10's first case before it uh, targeted any others. I'm not for sure, though, in that regard. It, I think it, it just may, cancels but... out one success. Okay, period. okay. So that's still, uh, the 10 then will count as one in, in that situation. Uh, what was the command? Relax. Okay, um... The scream takes some time getting out of her system, as it is one of sheer terror before her body can really respond to her current surroundings. Uh, but eventually, it stops, as the uh, the neurons in her brain flicker back to consciousness. The uh, the pale blue eyes are uh, still, uh, given her current terror, uh, it's not really possible for her to relax as much as uh, Byron would have liked her to. But she stopped screaming, and it was a really loud and powerful scream, too. And instead now, she is, uh, she's immediately tested the bonds, realizing that her hands are uh, her back by the chair, and her legs are attached to the chair, too. She's whipped her head around, and she's seen the four of you. For someone who does not need to breathe, she's actually drawing in deep, ragged breaths. Congratulations, you're only mostly dead. Right, uh, well Byron will put on his best smile and just say, Welcome back to immortality. She continues to whip her head between all four of you. Alright, well, Byron will then say, um, Don't worry, you're safe. We just didn't know what you would do when you came at it. That's why you are uh, uh, bound right now. If you calm down, and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. She uh, she stops whipping her head down. She she looks down at her body on the chair and her uh, her absolutely tattered uh, wayfish form and clothes and all, and uh, she trembles there for a little bit. And then you can see that the, the pale wave form is actually masking a bit of strength. Because, um, she actually, uh, she, the, the chair actually lifts off the ground about six inches, just with a sudden spring of power before it comes uh, falling back on the ground. The chair doesn't break. Almost as if she's testing it. Yeah, that's a bad idea, unless you want me to put this back in. I say brandishing the piece of wood. So he says unzipping his pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. She, uh, sure which one would more terrifying? <laughs> <laughs> no, Nosferatu groin bar! I hadn't even thought of that. That's she, perfect. After bouncing the night, uh, just hearing your words and uh, seeing what you brandished, she uh, she hisses, uh, baring her fangs, although she okay, quickly... Say... Sorry. Right, go on. No, go on. I was going to say, Byron says, there's no need for that, you know, to uh, 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 Marcus, or no, David, rather. So, uh, whether or not, you know... I'm playing Wink bad and nod to go along with that. <laughs> I'm playing the pretty cup. I say, Byron only has a one intelligence. Come on, he might not have noticed that you're playing a bad cup. That's true. <laughs> It's that wits, makes this man. Even Intelligence better, isn't everything. Come on. <laughs> no, no, honestly, if you don't realize that I'm being bad cop, that makes it even more convincing. Yeah. No, no, I, I see it, I think. I can make a roll. <laughs> <laughs> I think he sees it. It's like, roll wits plus subterfuge. I don't think there's some shit like that. It's okay, it's fine, whatever. Um, all right, uh, she doesn't lift the chair again. Her eyes uh, go away from the stake, back down to her chest, 
where she clearly sees uh, the hole in her tattered blouse and what's going to take a considerable amount of effort and blood to heal. Looks up at uh, Byron. It, uh, the beast is certainly attempting to lash out in this regard, but uh, she is, uh, has gotten control over the time being. The chair doesn't lift up. She is now glowering at Byron. So I'll say, so, do you remember anything of what happened to you prior to you being staked? Just jump right into it. An icy, uh, uh, chilling, frigid voice. Uh, uh, petite in nature, but no less malevolent because of it. Uh, just, uh, just, uh, wheezes out of her body. Who are you? Where am I? We're the people that found you. Um, yeah, I I'm Byron, and see this among steak? friends. I pulled it out. So, you should probably talk to us. We probably saved your, well, life as being a little bit generous. And this, she, uh, a little bit of fire goes out in the eyes. She, uh, frowns and falls back into silence. So, Byron will say what he said before. Uh, he'll say, you know, my name is Byron. You're among friends. Don't worry about it. Just, uh, don't, don't worry about David over there. He can get a little grumpy sometimes. Um... If there's anything you can tell us about how you ended up in this state, it would be greatly, it would greatly help us. She now lashes out again, uh, verbally. Why do you care? Well, mostly because that warehouse was, oh, wow, what happened there? Um, so, you know, we'd really appreciate finding out um, what did all that. Go ahead and make some, we'll say, all four of you, if you're all paying attention to her, uh, perception plus empathy, difficulty six. And is trained observer applied here? Yes. Sure. Yeah. I think I got three successes. I got two successes. Looks like I got five successes. So, and, uh, even uh, Sean's character got one there. All right. All four of you then see, uh, with the mention of what happened in the warehouse, uh, her eyes are now flickering from side to side, and her body lets out this involuntary tremble within the chair. Uh, the eyes close, and she shakes her head. She is afraid. So are you going to tell us, or what? It's her, okay. We're only here to help. Her, her yeah, eyes Byron, still Byron closed. Rap say, look, maybe we're moving too fast. Is there anything else we can do for you, make you more comfortable here, and... and He's going to try to relax her, so she'll talk, maybe. She says, do something for me. <laughs> Let's out a bitter laugh. There, There is nothing for me anymore, not after what I've seen. She stops uh, moving a bit, and uh, she's actually looking down at her own legs now, and says... I I knew that people were hunting us, but as they as everyone hunts everything, even when you're like this, but I 
I didn't think it would be tonight. I thought that we would actually be safe here. We're, and then she looks up, rapidly. We're still here, right? We're fine here. New New York City, the the, the big app where we were hoping to uh, uh, escape. Yeah, yeah, we're still here. I got a quick question. If you're in the talking mood, are you with the Sabat, or with the Camarilla, or the Anarchs, or are you unaligned? With all the list of sect names, she looks at you confused. Um, I think the Sabat were the people after us in Jersey City. She's scrunching her brows now. I think that's what they were called. Something about recruitment? I, I, I don't know. Do you know what your plan is? Her voice gets colder. I don't have one. All right. Is there a role that Byron can make to see if he suspects she might be lying or making something up, trying to hide the truth a little bit? I think that might be, uh, say, witch plus expression, or maybe perception plus expression, or witch plus subterfuge, or <laughs> something like that. Can it Aaron. fall under empathy? That might be, yeah. yeah. That might be empathy rather than expression, my bad. Sorry. Subterfuge is lying, by the right. way. Okay, um, I suppose that'd be perception plus empathy rather than wits plus empathy, then. They're all the same role for me, so pretty easy. Say, so, um, in that case, uh, um, she's not lying. She is, there's still a whole sense of icy terror that has uh, apparently gripped her. She is afraid, and what she's saying, as far as you're concerned, is the truth. She says, uh, we just wanted to get away, make a, make, make a life for ourselves. We, we didn't think that anyone would be hunting us, at least here, not so soon. Uh, where did you come from, originally? Uh, she, uh, she says, oh, bits and pieces, here and there. I'm from further up the coast. I, uh, we, uh, come down here as we thought that maybe this place would be safer and she stops talking you uh why was up the coast so dangerous for you then she uh she she tenses her lines and says From my understanding, I'm not too familiar with the situation, but there was some sort of war that happened here, even though she shakes her head. The city looked completely fine to me, but it, apparently these Sabat wanted people? I don't know. We None of us really ever understood any of it either. Has anyone ever called you a thin blood? The chair actually, she's so strong enough, she actually leaps back in the chair a good foot. The chair rockets and 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 now she's glow she's staring at you in terror. She violently shakes her head from side to side. No, 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 that's not what he said. That's not what he said. Relax, relax. I'm not going to throw you to the scourge. Is that what he's called? The thing that was going after you? I'm not certain of that. Was How many were, was in your party, and when you were attacked, was there any sort of fog involved? Fog? She scrunches her brows, uh, still very scared. No, there, there was, 
there was me and there was there was John and there was Mario and there was Emily that that's all that's all of us what are they they they're all gone yeah you were the sole survivor I think maybe, uh, I, and Byron's going to say this out loud, uh, maybe we should uh, try releasing her. Uh, you're going to be okay, aren't you? If we undo your legs, you, you're not going to flip out. He's also going to nod to Joseph with the shotgun. <laughs> It'd be a pretty bad idea. Oh, I missed that line. Fucking phone rang. It's not important. You guys can have knowledge that I don't have. It's okay. He was actually saying it to her. Oh, okay. What did he say then? I, I, I was just saying out loud that I say, well, maybe if you promise to uh, stay relaxed as you are now, we might uh, loosen some of your bindings a little bit. Um, but you need to promise that you're not going to totally flip out. And he's going to nod to uh, uh, Joseph with the shotgun. Okay, uh, she's gonna shake in her chair. She, uh, is not going to respond. All right, well, well, Byron's gonna look to the other three, uh, expectantly. I mean, you can tell him that that's not a good idea or, uh, go along with it. Either way, he's just throwing it out there to try to make her feel a little more comfortable. Listen, unless she agrees to cooperate, we're not going to untie her just yet. Agreed. Byron nods. He says, well, it's up to you. It's up to me. <laughs> Nowhere is safe. Doesn't matter what I do. This is um, an out-of-character question, but... Uh, do thin bloods show up on aura detection with Auspex? I believe they do because even regular mortals show up on it. No, I, I mean, do they show up as, like, being obviously thin bloods? No. There's there's a there's a trait which uh, will make them appear mortal, but other than that, they appear as just vampires. No, no sort of aura investigation through Auspex would reveal thin blood. Um, and go ahead. I was just say uh, Byron is going to get an embarrassed look on his face and say, "You know, with all the excitement, I think we forgot to ask you your name. You mentioned your three friends. Uh, who might you be?" She, uh, she's now, uh, she's, she's just focused her look back down at, uh, her lap, uh, on her legs, and, uh, she says, uh, my n name, as suppose it used to be, is Leslie, Leslie Cutter. Nice to meet you, Leslie. Leslie, uh, why don't I just loosen a little of these bindings? I'll, he's going to leave the handcuffs on, but he is going to unlash the legs, if nothing else. She does not attempt to kick at him while he does this. Now her legs have been unlashed. That, that might have been a bad idea, because she's super strong and can apparently throw the chair with, you know, just a already with just how bound she was. Well, I mean, you, I mean, if you have a problem with it, you can't stop him. Byron is not 100%. He's just winging it. So you're the, you're the DA. You're the cop. Uh, you can... I mean, we can still just shoot her if something goes wrong, I guess. Yeah, I think a shotgun to the face and two blood points. I don't... I think she might be down for the count if you do that. Yeah, the, between the four of us, if we all manage to get taken down by a thin blood with one probably one health box left. It, it, it's pretty sad. Yep. It would be. I agree. <laughs> it would be a... It'd be a noble end to an ignoble campaign. Suddenly Lombok Ruth and I uh, materializes from, <laughs> from under the crowd. Jordan screams in terror. <laughs> 
Marcus is like, get that away from me! Oh, I'm screaming. I'm just screaming internally. Right. You know. Everyone's like, what's the problem? No, you don't understand! I've seen him! Well, I'll, I'll tell you what's going through Byron's mind. Not that you would know this, but where I'm coming from is what he would like to do is possibly get her comfortable and hopefully find a place where she can stay with maybe one or two of us watching her, and then we'd go off and find the sheriff and figure out what the heck is going on with this, if we can, if you think that's a good idea. Okay, um, here's what's going through David's head. Again, not that he's going to share this with any of you ever for any reason, because come on. Um, first of all, he's thinking that if we bring her before the sheriff or anything else that might uh, cause her to be uh, exposed to the scourge, uh, that might be a death sentence. Her life is, would be forfeit. Exactly. Um, so, you know, that should be considered before anything else. Um, if we want to do right by her, it would probably be a better idea to point her out of the city and say, go. Um, and the other point is that uh, she's already at a uh, strength one uh, blood bond to uh, both David and Byron if uh, we kindly offered her uh, to help uh, heal up her injuries a bit more and ease the damage a bit, uh, or ease her hunger a bit, rather. She'd be at a level two to us and probably be a lot more compliant. But, you know, that's me being sneaky and a little bit evil. If you bring it up, then Byron will probably go along with it. In front of her. <laughs> Well, I mean, if he says, do you, do you think you might need more blood or something like that, uh, Brian, uh, Byron would jump in and say, yeah, we'd be more than happy to do that, um, is what I meant. So, yeah, in front of her. We can offer in front of her. Okay. I'm actually going to go with the uh, uh, sneaky offer of, listen, you look hungry and beat up. Would you like a little bit more blood? And I can roll uh, manipulation plus subterfuge if you would like. Uh, if uh, you know, uh, I should be concealing this. That won't be necessary. Uh, you mention it. Uh, there is just uh, some sort of icy laugh that comes from her, and, and she says, "That's, that's absurd. It's, it's not going to fix the fact that I have thin blood or whatever." And then she looks up. Is it? Well, no. But like I said... She immediately looks back down. Uh, but but it might fix now. that... We uh, don't know everything about it. It might. It might be worth a shot. But it might fix that big hole in your chest right there. She immediately shrugs and says, what, What's the point of that? It. I'm just going to be hunted and killed like all the others were anyway. You we know, there's... There are cities out there that don't have scourges, you know. We escaped here because we thought this would be the best location to not join in some sort of stupid war or battle, and we walk straight into this. Yeah, this is pretty much the worst choice you could have picked. No joke. Well, well that was a nice way of putting it. But it's there are things that can be done, and there are... Uh, options that now that you have someone who's maybe in a little bit more of a better position looking out for you to help you along with. Sean, that sounds like your character Joseph here is, uh, I mean, uh, given his uh, nice demeanor here, would actually qualify for an attempt at persuading her in that regard. That sounds like a, a goody sort of thing where perhaps he's not trying to manipulate her. So, um, roll? I just don't know what the hell he's supposed to roll. <laughs> Good, I've got well, the idea in my head. I don't know where to go from here. Charisma well, I... plus something. <laughs> I'll say empathy to that. Expression? Too. 
Empathy is more of the intaking of stuff, the, the information coming in, expressions more of information going out. Either way, they're both at two dots for me. Sure, we'll go for, 